When I moved into my apartment in 2019, the look I sought for was Base Jungle Cafe. This would explain the abundance of plants as well as natural versus space age textures. I love being surrounded by color and art, so you'll find many DIY pieces in this apartment. Hi, if you're new here, are we all new here, relatively speaking? I'm Kim. I'm an illustrator living and working out of Brooklyn, New York. I've lived in this 450 square foot junior one bedroom apartment since September of 2019. And since then, this place has also effectively functioned as a art studio. I also share the space with my studio mate, Sumi. This is a no shoes household. So when you first enter the entryway, the first thing we do is take off the shoes. There's also a large round mirror that a friend gifted me, and I later painted it a sage color. Underneath it is a landing pad for my headphones and keys. The white IKEA cabinet is a leave behind from the former tenants, and now I use it to stow away books. Upon entering the living, dining, studio space, the first thing you come across is my proudest DIY. It's another IKEA cabinet, but this one's been converted into a place to hide Sumi's litter box. The inside is lined with contact paper to help with cleanup. There's also a small charcoal bag to help reduce any odors. Above is where I stow old sketchbooks. On the top of the litter cabinet is a flower pot lamp, along with some of my favorite art books. In addition to many plants and colors in here, you may also notice the unruly amount of mirrors. Not only are these intended to make the space feel larger, but since the windows line only one side of the apartment, the mirrors also help to reflect and increase the amount of natural light. Over here, I just arranged a bunch of mirror tiles from Home Depot. Since they're more affordable than a huge mirror, yet form a visually interesting shape, there's a big old pothos right next to it, but I'll skip the plants in this tour. If you're interested in hearing about them though, there's a different tour altogether. On the fridge is a magnet from Venice, as well as a paper charm or ofuda from Kinkakuji or Golden Pavilion in Kyoto. Flanking the fridge and the <clears throat> micro kitchen is a risograph print by my super talented friend, Kevin V. Q. Dam and above it is a tiny Polaroid of Sumi. My kitchen is literally a closet, but you'd be surprised at how many meals that have been made in here. I sort of like the pre-existing backsplash for its warmth and earthiness. I tried to play into the same vibe using a few layered cutting boards. In the morning, I like to brew espresso and have it with whatever I'm reading as my soul slowly re-enters its body from its previous state of slumber. I've lived in three different apartments prior to this one, none of which had a dining table. Since I wanted this apartment to truly feel like my home, it was important to me to finally have one. And the circular tulip table with black shellac was perfect for me. Not only did it fit into the Space Jungle Cafe theme for me, but I love the fact that it's round, so any number of people up to five could sit there naturally, and the flow around it still feels good. The black vase is one that I painted over myself, and I'm still happy with my original design. For now, it holds some monstera clippings that are still being treated for scale. The Cheska chairs with their rattan backs and olive cushions really ground the table in contrast, pulling the vibe back to earth and warming the space. I also got this stool for free back when a former partner worked at Kumon and they were replacing their furniture. I like that I can store books underneath and it also comes in handy when I water my plants. Besides the south facing windows and the old charm of a brownstone, another thing that really drew me into this apartment was the fireplace. I tend to dress it up with cut flowers anytime I'm anticipating guests. Currently, it's still decorated for Lunar New Year. The mantelpiece also houses this misshapen candlestick that I made out of polymer clay, and I'm weirdly proud of. And of course, another circular mirror to echo the shape of the dining table. Sumi also dines during each meal right in front of the fireplace. She really loves the ambiance. Right here is where much of the magic happens, AKA the altar of screens. 
This one is my 24 inch Cintiq, a type of drawing tablet that I often use for client work. The wireless keyboard helps me with the keyboard shortcuts that make my workflow faster. Both of these are hooked up to my MacBook Pro, behind which is a color pencil drawing of mine celebrating the year of the rabbit. I like to stow away any extra memory cards and card readers in this little glass stein that I got at a flea market in Berlin. The desk itself I also got for free, along with the stool from Kumon. It's got lots of wear, but it does the trick. There's another white IKEA cabinet below that, which is where I store my scanner as well as many of my art supplies. I also store art supplies in this mini filing cabinet that I got from an antique store in Virginia. This first draw has some stickers, pens, markers, washi tape. The second draw is where I keep my Prismacolor babies. The third is where I put my acrylic paints, and so on. I'm actually really happy with this window hammock from Tuft & Paw. Although it was pricey, not only was it the most aesthetically pleasing one I could get my hands on, but it adds a lot of enrichment to Sumi's day. A bonus being that I can watch her as I work while she spies on birds and neighbors. Between the two windows is an unavoidably large radiator. I've done my best to draw the eye away from it, however, with this easel, as well as this crane diptych that I painted myself. If it looks familiar to you, that's because your girl's a hack. It's based off of a Gucci wallpaper that I really adore, but really can't afford. I'm happy with how it turned out. In this corner of the room is what I like to think of as a little shrine to my late cat, Chow. I've seen people plant evergreen trees next to graves, I suppose, symbolize eternity and immortality since the leaves stay green throughout the cold season. So for me, this large ficus is a nod to that in regard to Chow. Below the little shrine is where a lot of my favorite graphic novels reside. as well as my film camera and this mini Polaroid camera. One of my proudest moments in living in this apartment alone was when I put up this floating shelf. It's definitely too low for taller people, but for me, it's just right. I like that I can display art and plants at eye level then switch them out whenever it suits me. Below it is a sofa from West Elm that I got on sale during Labor Day. I like that the inky blue color balances out the softness of the pale pink wall color. I've had so many naps on this sofa, but it's also where I eat many of my meals and work on client sketches. So many client sketches. My coffee table is pretty simple, but I like how unobtrusive it is. It also doesn't hurt that I found it on the street. Rather than having one large bookshelf, as would make sense, I like to scatter my books into separate corners of my living space, much like the Triforce gets split into three separate people. Anyway, this is my hefty to read section. And that would conclude the studio tour. Living and working here for the past three odd years has sometimes been challenging, but deeply fulfilling. As a native New Yorker, this city will always have my heart. And despite weathering the isolation of lockdown here, I'm truly happy to say that this is where my little community is. The things I value most about my home are its peace, its ability to foster and facilitate creativity, and its source of refuge to both myself and anyone who is a guest. Thanks so much for stopping by. See you next time.